If you saw my last video, then you know that Penny went to our new vet last week and he has been struggling with on and off hair loss for quite a while now. I explained everything to my vet and she went ahead and did her exam and then she gave me our first two options, which was to do a skin scraping and or a ringworm test which neither of the two vets that we first saw for Penny's hair loss wanted to do a skin scraping, which may come to a shock to many of you in the veterinarian community. They had said because they saw that his hair was regrowing, they didn't want to stress him out by doing a skin scraping. So I went ahead and said to my vet, let's start off with the skin scraping and see what we get from there. So she went ahead and she just plucked some hairs from his face, neck, and near his bum. Those were the areas that he had the most hair loss. And she went back, looked at it under a microscope, came back, lo and behold, Penny has demodex mites. I am really upset at myself that I didn't push the first two vets to do a skin scraping to make sure that if he did have mites, we were going to treat it thoroughly instead of just doing one dose just in case he had mites. Because as my vet explained to me, sometimes with mites, it takes more than just one dose of medication to get rid of them. So my vet prescribed me Revolution and instructed me to give one dose every two weeks for six doses and that we are going to have to remove all of the bedding and clean all of his accessories every time he gets a treatment. So because of Penny's really massive enclosure, he temporarily is in a hospital bin cage just for a short while because having to change out all of this bedding would be a fortune. I had a couple of people ask me what the signs of mites are in hamsters, so I figured I would give you a little bit of info on Demodex mites. The most common symptoms of mites you'll see is hair loss, dry or flaky skin, and itching. In this case, Penny didn't have any itching, but he did have dry skin and hair loss. There also are several types of mites that can affect hamsters. So this is why it's really, really important that you go see your vet and have them do a skin scraping if you suspect mites, because they will be able to tell you exactly what type of mite you're dealing with because the treatments may vary. The most common mites are demodex mites, which is what I'll be talking more about today. And there are two different types. There is demodex short-bodied and demodex long-bodied. These mites can actually be present in healthy hamsters without any symptoms because these mites feed off of things like dead skin cells, sebum, and hair follicles. So in small numbers, these mites are actually harmless to hamsters. However, when the quantity starts to multiply, that's when it starts to become problematic. But other mites that can affect hamsters are sarcopic mites and notrogeric mites, I'm probably not saying that right, but these can cause mange in hamsters. And there also is the tropical rat mites, which feed on the hamster's blood and can be very difficult to get rid of. Now, what causes demodex mites to over multiply? The first thing is a weakened immune system. If your hamster has a compromised immune system, that is when the mites can start to over multiply and that's when your hamster will start to show those visible signs like hair loss and skin irritations. Your hamster could also develop it from contaminated bedding or environment as these mites can spread through bedding, toys, or surfaces that have been in contact with an infected hamster. Now, a lot of people ask me, should I freeze the bedding that I just bought? And if your bedding is packaged and sealed, the likelihood of it having demodex mites is extremely low and most of the time your hamster probably didn't develop it from the bedding because the likelihood of sealed bedding getting contaminated from a hamster who was infected by demodex mites is really low but if you want to be extra safe yes you can put it in your freezer but if you don't have freezer space don't stress about it and the last thing that could cause demodex mites to over multiply is of course stress as stress lowers the immune system. 
For treatment, there are a couple of medications that your vet may prescribe, such as ivermectin or revolution, but please keep in mind, these are something that only a vet can prescribe you. So it's important that if you think your hamster has mites or parasites, you visit your local exotic vet. Now for cage cleaning, since my vet did recommend we sanitize Penny's enclosure and all of his supplies to prevent reinfection, we are going to have to throw out all of the bedding and sanitize his accessories and his enclosure. So let's get started with cleaning his enclosure. I have not been looking forward to this because it is a lot of work to have to sanitize and throw out all of this stuff. I'm just gonna start by taking out any accessories that I can bake or wash. For all of his beautiful sprays that he has in his enclosure, I'm not gonna throw them away because for Demodex mites, they cannot survive under temperatures of 32F or zero C. So I'm gonna pop these in my freezer for 24 hours and they should be good. I am really excited that we finally have figured this out and I have a good hamster vet now. It's been a week, I think now, since Penny's had his treatment and he's in like a enclosure where the bedding has been cleaned and everything. And his hair is already starting to grow back and it looks nice and thick. So I'm so hopeful and I'm just, I'm very happy. Oh, this is gonna fall, isn't it? Fall, don't fall, don't fall. For anybody wondering if my other hamsters or the rabbits are going to be affected by this, the rabbits cannot get this type of Demodex mites because all species have their own type of Demodex. Like humans have Demodex as well. Um, so it cannot affect anything but their own species. For the hamsters, because they do not share enclosures or bedding, or accessories or anything, the hamsters are fine. Now for my wooden products, you do not need to throw these away. They can be very easily baked in the oven because Demodex mites cannot withstand temperatures of above 130 degrees Fahrenheit or 54 degrees Celsius. I'm putting my oven to 200 degrees Fahrenheit. And for anybody concerned about things lighting in the oven, wood, typically doesn't start to ignite until temperatures of around 500 degrees Fahrenheit, which the majority of you are not putting your ovens that high. For any of the ceramic or plastic items, those can just simply be washed with hot water and some soap. I know people are going to ask about how do you prevent mites in hamsters? And my answer is that you can't. <laughs> if you plan to own hamsters long-term and you wanna own them forever, you are probably gonna have to experience dealing with mites at least once in that period of time. Unfortunately, there is really nothing you can do to prevent something like this. You can freeze and bake all your items for as much as you want, but <laughs> Demodex mites in particular, they can occur if the immune system is compromised or if your hamster maybe was stressed out a little bit. So there's not really a way to prevent that 100%. We did it! <laughs> Yay! 
Thankfully with Demodex mites, they don't survive past a week without a host. So I'm going to wipe down the inside with some diluted water vinegar solution, and then it's gonna stay empty for a couple of weeks. So by the time Penny is ready to go back into it, all of them should be deceased. Hopefully this will be able to help somebody else out there if you were also dealing with Demodex mites with your hamsters. And also thank you so much for joining me throughout cleaning my entire hamster enclosure because it's a lot of work. <laughs> so I hope you have enjoyed this video and I hope to see you in our next one. Bye.